Good morning. Glad you could join us again for a strong and sturdy podcast. I hope you're having a great day so far. And I uh, hope you had a great weekend. It's November 13th, great off Monday morning. And it's always a wonderful thing to look back on the weekend and see what God does. And whenever God does something, it has nothing to do with us, 100% God. Yes, we're tools, and I'll talk about that a little bit today, but we're tools, we're a, uh, vessels to be used for the glory of God. And that's our whole purpose, to give glory and honor to God. had a great weekend on uh, Saturday, got to go out and uh, knocked on the door. Actually, I was pulling up to a visit. We're going to do some visits or Turkey Sunday in the, and, and this coming week. It's coming weekend, so I was out. I wanted to go to some visits that I hadn't gone to in a while. So as I was coming out from a visit, uh, I saw a family get out of their uh, 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 car, uh, two kids and I believe two sisters. And so I went up to one of them and I gave him a tr- gave her a track and I said, I'd like to invite you out to church. And, and uh, she just moved here a month ago. And it's, it's amazing how God sets... It up, you know. If I had been there a couple minutes later, uh, she would have been inside. If I came a couple minutes earlier, she wouldn't have been home yet. It's amazing how God sets things up. And I able to ask her if she knew for sure she was going to heaven. She said she hoped so. So I said, "Well, let's go up to your apartment. We can sit down. We can talk." And she was willing to do that. So we went to her apartment, sat down, opened the Bible, and showed her how she could go to heaven, a hundred. Percent and what a wonderful thing she trusted Christ as her Savior. Those divine appointments that God sets you up for, if you're willing to be used, if you want to be used, God is willing uh, to use you. And what a wonderful thing that is. Now, uh, I hope you had a great weekend again. And now we're into the week. Our next service, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. Love to uh, have you there. Luke chapter 1. Verse 18, I'm going to read three verses here in the one additional verse of Father down in the chapter. But the Bible says, And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am well, for I am an old man, and my wife well stricken in years. And the angel answering said unto them, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and am I sent to speak unto thee, and to show thee these, th- uh, t- uh, these glad tidings? And behold, thou shalt be dumb, and not be able, not able to speak, until the day that these things shall be performed, because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. It is not impossible. Here in the eyes of Zacharias, an angel comes to him and says, "You're going to have a child." This child would turn out to be John, and the one that prepared the way for the Lord, born six months before Christ. And he prepared that way. And Zechariah said, well, how do I know these things are going to come to pass? And I'm old. My wife is old. And from a human standpoint, he questioned the authority of God. He questioned what God was going to do. And he didn't take God's word at face value and just decide God said it and it's going to happen. Whether I think it is or not is irrelevant. God said it and he's going to make it happen. And what a wonderful thing it is when God makes something happen. Because Zacharias Zacharias doubted, uh, the Bible says that he was dumb. He could not speak until his son John was born. What God says will happen. God's word will remain true. There is nothing God cannot do. Do not doubt God. This book, the King James Bible, that you hold in your hand, every jot and every tittle is going to come true. All the way from Genesis to Revelation is coming true. We see prophecy being fulfilled in real time. Jesus is coming back. That is a fact. It's going to happen. Why? How do you know that? Because God said it. And God said it. Whether or not I believe it or not, the fact is it's going to happen. God has fulfilled prophecies before, and he continued to fulfill prophecies. When Jesus came and John came, it was fulfillment of prophecy, because what God said, it was going to happen. Don't doubt God. God, number one, God is the God of the impossible. 100% of the time, God wants to do the impossible. He wants to. 
And it's up to us, are we willing to believe that God can do the impossible? I think when we think about the impossible, stepping out of our power, stepping out of our zone, stepping out, stepping out of what we can do, and stepping into the shoes of God, and saying, God, I know, I, I don't know how it's going to be done from a human perspective. From a human perspective, this is impossible. It's just not going to happen. And God says, I'm not doing it through a human perspective. I'm not doing it through human power. He said, I am God. And I said, I'm going to do it. And therefore, that is what I'm going to do. God is the God of the impossible. God is, God can use you. It is not impossible. <laughs> Catch this. God can use you. It is not impossible. Did you know God can do the impossible through you? In the eyes of man, a soul getting saved is absolutely impossible. But when you allow God to use you, God says, through you, I can see a soul spend an eternity in heaven. And God says, through you, I can do the impossible. He said, through me, I can't bring anybody to church. But through God... God says, I can use you to bring somebody to church. You say, God, I can't uh, I can't uh, do certain things in my life. God says, through me, I can allow you to do the impossible. The Bible says in Luke chapter 1, verse 37, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. If you understand what that word nothing means, not a thing. There is not one thing that is impossible to God, and it's hard for our finite mind to comprehend the word impossible, because we, in our human strength, there's a whole lot that's impossible, and but God says through me, and only through me, and only through what I've already said, God says, I can do the impossible, souls getting saved, impossible through man, 100% possible through God. So people's lives being changed, impossible through me, but 100% possible through Christ. What a wonderful thing that is. And when I place myself in the place where God can use me, Zechariah stood in the place and God, uh, I'll let you use me. Mary, God came to Mary uh, through the angel Gabriel and said, oh, God wants to use you to, to carry the Christ child. Mary said, you can use me. Now God came to Moses and said, I want you to bring my people out of Egypt. And Moses said, I'll let you use me. Uh, God came to Joseph and said, I want you to uh, prepare for seven year, plenty, years of plenty and seven years of famine. Joseph said, I'm willing to be used. The question comes to you today, are you willing to be used? Are you willing to let God do the impossible with you? And uh, I remember back when I was a teenager, I, I, I never envisioned where I'd be in 10 or 15 years. When I was a teenager, I necessarily didn't necessarily want kids or couldn't fathom how to pay bills, how to run a house, how to have kids, how to how to have a marriage because that was beyond my human capability at that point. But with God, nothing is impossible. And then I look back and said, "Man, it, it doesn't look like a big deal now, but then it was a big deal." My friend, let God do the impossible with you. Let God, just let God use you. And that God will do the impossible. Number three, never think that God can't use you. Oh, my friend, God can always use you. Never think that you're out of the place where God can't use you. And the, the only reason God doesn't use you is because you don't want him to. That's the only reason. If you want God to use you, God will use you. The only reason that God won't use you if you stand in the way and you say, God, I don't want you to use me. Leave me alone. You know what? God says, okay, fine. I won't use you. But if you generally in your heart want God to use you, you want God to do the impossible. Man, we got some things planned. We got the future. Pa 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 Pastor has a vision. He wants to see things happen. And, and it's impossible through man. But with God, it isn't possible. 100% possible. We can have X amount of people in church. We can have souls saved every Sunday. Lives changed. People baptized. Uh, lives turned around. But people in church. There's people in church. And I've only been here about a year. It'll be two years in January. And there's people here today because I let God use me. There's people here for pastor because God, he, uh, pastor let God use him. 
And the same thing goes with you. You let God use you. The impossible is certain. The impossible is certain. It is not impossible, my friend. God wants to do the impossible. God can use you to do the impossible and never think God can't use you because all the time he can't just be willing. Vessel, say, God, what do you want? God will, God will direct you. And then you be in church, you read your Bible, you pray. God will send you down the right path of where he wants you to be and be in the place. And you look back, you say, wow, look what God did. Uh, man, when I look back, I said, wow, look what God did. It's just an amazing thing where God has brought me. And it's an amazing thing when you look back one day where God brought you because you decided to let God do the impossible through you. Well, I hope that's a blessing. I hope that's an encouragement and challenge to you this morning. Let God do the impossible with you. Uh, have a great day and God bless.